heading towards another test of the upper range bound activity for the, US, uh, the Australian markets, whilst the US markets continue to make newer highs again. What's next? Let's have a look at the charts and see what we can find out. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. Well, the first week of June is now over and done with, and the US markets are making newer highs. Australian market is still range bound, but attempting to get upwards towards the upper range um, of this range. Well, let's have a look in terms of seeing what the charts are basically saying. But you can see we're basically back up, up above these 10, 30 day moving averages again on the all ordinaries. No newer highs being formed in the Australian market as yet in terms of the overall all ordinaries. We're heading upwards towards the upper range again. It just seems to be this ping pong going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But if we take a look in terms of drilling down towards sub indices, well, this is where things get start getting interesting. The top 20 stocks have made a new high. Okay, so they're pushing upwards. But what about the other sub indices? Not so much. The mid cap 50s are now the laggards. Isn't it interesting? Things were starting to push upwards in terms of the mid-cap 50s over the recent times. The top 20s were starting to lag. Everything's just the patterns just seem to keep on shifting between. It just doesn't seem to be any consistency amongst it all. We need to see the consistency all the way through before we really start seeing everything pushing upwards. Top 100, still not forming those newer highs either. You can really see that there are laggards behind everything and there's just nothing really, really pushing all the way upwards all the way getting through everything moving upwards in that way. So we really, really need to see all guns blazing before we really break out of this range that we're continually getting stuck in. That is a, that is a direct comparison across to what's going on in the US. Although there will be one particular chart over in the US, which we'll go into a little bit later on, which I really want you to pay attention to over there as well, which is acting as a laggard over there too. So. There's some really, really interesting things going on with everything that's happening in the overall markets when we take a look at the big picture. Volatility wise, okay, how are things going there? Well, overall, there just doesn't seem to be much fear going on. Everything seems to be roaring along overall, even whilst we're still stuck in this range. Quite interesting. That's why I had put in that pause right there. There's a lot to ponder here. Why are we still seeing no reason for concern amongst all of this. Everything just seems to be going moseying along. No seem to be any concern or no worries whatsoever. Everything's just going like, ah, everything's fine. No problem whatsoever. Should there be? Well, really, we just don't seem to be able to get ourselves out of this range. Yet volatility is just telling us we should be roaring along, making new highs, going without any major problem whatsoever. The charts aren't telling us that. The charts aren't indicating the fact that we are making new highs and going along and really making sure that we're powering along all over the place. Very, very bizarre and interesting, especially when you start taking a look at the major sectors that are going on here. Energy, weak, really weak. In fact, so weak, we're almost making new lows again in relation to energy, the biggest sector in the Australian economy well below the 10 and the 30 day moving averages. I don't mean to sound ultra bearish in relation to things here, but this seriously needs to kick up. This needs to seriously kick up and start making newer highs and getting above the 30 and the 10 day moving averages. This is the biggest sector in the Australian economy. Why is it lagging so much? Is this one of the big key areas that is actually holding back the Australian economy from making new highs? Potentially, but also when you take a look at materials, the second largest sector in the Australian economy also lagging, also below 10 and 30 day moving averages. Sure, it might be actually starting to form some support here, but still lagging, still causing problems in terms of actually firing off and starting to actually make newer highs. Needs to actually get above the 10 and 30 day moving averages and start making newer highs above this height at least to begin with. Now, 
Industrials is at least making new highs. That's the third pillar, third pillar from the construction industry. So that's something. That's a sign in terms of some bullish action in terms of holding us to the top end of the range. That is something to at least put your hat on in terms of a bullish sentiment overall there. Plus, there was also a good volume spike here, which has led to the rise for the week. So there we go. There's some positive signs there. Consumer is also looking pretty strong. Good volume spike there at the end of last week has led to a really, really good drive in the consumer staples area. But really remember, consumer staples is something that is, like I was saying last week, this is something that we all depend on. These are the things that we all need to survive. Things like the supermarkets, all of those kind of things there. Normally a defensive sector. So keep that one in mind overall. But encouraged as well by the consumer discretionary. This is where we buy the things that we want out of life. The wants rather than the needs. So the consumer discretionary, the power of the consumer is starting to come back into life. Quite a, quite a positive sign overall in terms of generalized spending. So overall, a good sign a good sign for the economy in general, but these are not the biggest sectors of the Australian economy. Quite fascinating overall what we're seeing in terms of the undercurrents. Healthcare is looking like and being coming quite positive again as well too, also driving off a volume spike at the end of last week. So we've got some good positive sectors going along here, but they're not being held up and being supported by the biggest sectors in the Australian economy. So there is some caution here as to what's actually driving. Those ones need to turn around in conjunction with all of these sectors as well. Financial's doing quite well as well too. This one actually doing really, really well for the mere fact that it's actually even taken over the previous resistance level as well too. Interesting thing to note at this point as well too, part of the presentation. All of this was occurring on relatively low volume. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of discussion in terms of this in, in general as well. Is volume a really, really major problem in terms of low volume when you start having new high, rise, high rises in unit prices and so forth? I'm personally of the frame of mind that, yes, it does. You really need to have the volume rising. Price does pay. Absolutely. So if you're making if you're making um, profits and so forth of the price going upwards, that's great. You really, really should be patting yourself on the back with those kind of things there. But if you're not having the volume driving all of this with the overall market going on, and a lot of that has been because everyone's been sitting on their, sitting on their hands waiting for jobs report from Friday night over in the United States, all of those kind of things there, which got released as well too. Didn't make much difference to the market overall. There's still a heck of a lot of volatility more than anything. But other than that, it didn't really make much difference to the actual movement of the market at the end of the day over in the US. So it'll be fascinating to see what does happen when people start returning to the markets now next week. Interesting though, of course, we have a shortened trading week this week here in Australia. America had a shortened trading week last week. So some interesting dynamics going on volume wise too. But regardless, we've actually had a very, very strong week in certain sectors. Other sectors, though, information technology, interestingly enough, not a strong sector for the past couple of weeks. We talked about this last week as well. Even with a volume spike that happened at the end of last week, wasn't enough to encourage this particular sector to increase in unit price. You saw that with the last couple of sectors that the volume spike actually encouraged increases in the unit price. Not so with this sector. What's happening here? This is really, really fascinating, especially when you start thinking about the big stocks over in the US, such as NVIDIA and so forth, which are making new and newer highs all the time. What's going on here? This is really, really fascinating. Very, very interesting as to what is happening here with the infotech sector. Why is this not making new highs? Sure, it is at the upper range of the no man's land territory, so it might be it's getting ready to make a new high, make new highs, but at the same time, the momentum is draining at this point. It would need to make new highs above this area. Fascinating stuff. So keep an eye on the infotech sector. Communications, this has turned around dramatically. Last week, we were basically saying, oh, okay, lower lows, lower highs. Now, all of a sudden, it's actually breached up above all of the 30-day moving average, the 10-day moving average, and also made new highs, with, especially with this volume spike here on Wednesday. So communications has turned back in favour. 
another sector to add to the tool belt in terms of something else moving in the bullish direction. So looking quite good. Also confirmed with the RSI actually moving quite positively there as well too. Utilities coming back in favour as well too. Hang on, this is defensive, isn't it? A lot of moving parts going on in relation to this market. We need to be able to keep nimble as to what is exactly going on here. A lot of things are definitely moving around, so be very, very cautious and be very, very careful as to what's actually going on here too. Is this going to make new highs as well, considering the fact that it's actually bounced off a volume spike, bounced off the 30-day moving average, and is now settled clearly above both the 10 and the 30-day moving averages yet again. Property real estate, subsector financial industry for those who are new to the series, bounced off the 30-day moving average very, very strongly as well, bounced off a very strong volume spike there as well too. Looks as though that's heading back into a bullish direction as well too. Gold, even gold's come back into favour in terms of the gold sector down here in Australia. Okay, bouncing off a volume spike there as well too at the end of last week. Remember, at the end of last week, there was actually quite a lot of volume traded in a lot of different a lot of different stocks. It just really calmed down quite significantly throughout the entire week this week. Like I said before, waiting for that volume, waiting for that jobs report at the end of end of the week over in the United States. It was just really, really quiet trading this week overall. Everything was waiting in anticipation going on. Towards the end of the week, things really started picking up unit price wise, but not really much in the volume space. Gold sector, mm, a little bit, a little bit of volume kicking in there as well, right towards the end of the week. Looks like something's going on in terms of activity there. Not so much in the emerging companies though. That really, really lagged throughout the entire week. Didn't really recover all that much towards the end of the week. Okay, so there is a bit of divergence going on there, especially when a lot of the emerging companies here in Australia are actually concentrated in gold as well. So something to really, really consider in terms of everything there. This is really closed very, very heavily beneath both the 10 and the 30 day moving averages. Could this snap back upwards? Maybe it might be coming back to test this support area here or it could fall flat on its face. So really, really be mindful of all of these things here, especially with uncertainty as to what's going on in the markets overall. Now, heading across to our friends over in the United States, as you can see, clear breakout above former highs on the S&P 500. But look at the volume. Very, very lax in compared to what happened towards the end of last week, bouncing off that 30-day moving average. Everything was waiting on the jobs report. What happened at the, What happened once the jobs report came through? Closed pretty much right where it opened at the end of the day on the Friday. It made a new high, but then retreated after making that new high. That's what that week was all about. Made the new high, then came right back down to basically where it started at the beginning of the day. Happened on the S&P, also happened on the NASDAQ. Virtually a carbon copy, okay? But what does that mean from going forward from here? Well, overall, it could essentially mean that we're basically going to just experience a bit of sideways action, a bit of a pullback, or really not much more at this point in time. We've really just got to essentially see how people are going to react around this level. But essentially, we do have some resistance levels basically forming around about up this, up, about this point. That is essentially what's going on. The more and more pullback we get from these highs that are essentially forming, so we've got a resistance level here, we've got an ultimate high up there, but the more and more testing of these levels and the more and more that's going on, then essentially there's more and more resistances that are building up that need to be overcome before we get new highs. And if the momentum is not kicking in to be able to get through all of this, then there's going to be more and more obstacles to overcome in order to get to those new highs. And it's especially a bit of a problem when you've actually got these next two charts, this one being the first and the next chart after this, really struggling to maintain traction. You've seen that with the Dow 30. Look at this. This here, this red line here is the 30-day moving average. You've had a couple of days where it's tried to get past that 30-day moving average and it's failed. Failed quite significantly in order to try and get past it. And 
By doing so, it's causing more and more obstacles. Now, these are the top 30 stocks in the Australian, uh, sorry, in the American Stock Exchange. Big, big companies. And it's failing to make higher ground in order to get through it. So you've now got the 30-day moving average to get past, plus the tops of these in order to make new highs. That's one obstacle overall there. Then you've got the Russell. Now, why did the Russell fall so heavily? You're going to see in the next chart in terms of the bonds. That's actually the reason why. These particular stocks here in terms of the Russell are heavily influenced by interest rate discussions. And the bonds were heavily affected on Friday, massively affected. Whenever there is potential discussions in terms of interest rate rises or when the yields go up and the bonds go down, then that is essentially going to influence these particular companies in the Russell. Now, these particular companies here, like I've been mentioning for many, many videos in the past, you can go back through them and have to look there as well. These particular companies are very, very heavily influenced by potential interest rate rises because they're heavily indebted. Whenever the interest rate potentially rises, then essentially what will happen is these guys will pay more in terms of the loans that they actually owe. That's it. It's not, not much, much more difficult to understand than that. But when they've got a lot of debt on their balance sheets, they're going to be owing more interest. And that's pretty much about it. So these are the small cap companies that get influenced by that. And this is actually just making lower highs and lower lows. You can see the trend right there. Well beneath both the 10 and the 30 day moving averages and forming a downtrend. This is, this is weighing as an anchor on the overall market. Even though it's not really showing on the S&P and the NASDAQ right now, they're still forming higher highs. But will they keep on forming higher highs? And that's being shown by, we'll go back to the NASDAQ chart for a tick, these wicks and everything that are forming here as well. Now it's going to cause a few more obstacles to be able to create newer highs overall there. Now I was mentioning in terms of the bonds story, I'll show you that bonds chart right now as we speak, because take a look at the reduction in, oh sorry, take a look at the next one coming up. The volatility firstly, we'll have a look there. Volatility falling through the floor still, because it's based on the S&P 500. S&P 500 is still making new highs at this point. So volatility, no one's really caring about that right now. So no one's really worrying about buying insurance on their shares. Let's now take a look at the bonds situation. And you can see on Friday in particular, Big drop in the bonds. Much, much more talk about yields going up. Bonds come down conversely. Bonds went down 1.8%. That is a massive, massive move in the bonds market. Huge move in one day. Okay. Other big move that happened in bonds of that same magnitude or similar magnitude that was going down 1.2% was on the 29th of May, right at the end of last month. 1.8% is even much more in magnitude in relation to that. So much so that we've actually dipped down beneath, even though it was actually above that, that level before during the week, we've dipped back down beneath that 92 level we keep on talking about in this particular presentation here. So we're back in that range again between the 90 and the 92 level quite considerably, even though we are above the 10 and the 30 day moving averages at this point in time. But either way, still quite range bound. Like we were discussing last week, we need to have a major move way, way above here or way down below here before we're even really talking about any changes in interest rates overall. But the fact that the yields went up so significantly on Friday has caused a bit of a spook, especially in terms of the Russell. Now, in terms of the bonds coming down, expect most likely on Monday, our Australian bonds to probably follow suit as well. Now, what does this all mean in terms of the bonds and all the interest rates and things like that? Well, as you probably are aware, ECB, in terms of the European um, European Central Bank, did actually lower rates by 0.25 basis points earlier in the week. Okay, they they they, they actually earmarked that right early in the earlier in the year, basically saying, yeah, we're going to lower it in June, and they followed through on their promise. That's great, but. Some of the commentary that came out of it at the end of at the end of the day, even even with that as well, was we're still very very aware that inflation is is still quite high. So it was actually really really contra, contra, counterintuitive to what they were actually basically saying. Oh, we'll lower rates, but we know inflation is still high. Left everyone scratching their heads. 
but they still follow through on what their promise was to lower the interest rates in June. That's basically about it. So they were just basically, I suppose, pandering to the public. But the basic situation is that they've done, they've followed through on that. Now everyone's still looking at things, and, and basically the ECB is still saying, we are data dependent, like every single central bank is basically still saying. Nothing new. So overall, still just follow the charts and let the charts dictate the story for you. That's essentially the moral of the story. Now, in terms of Australian bond futures, well, interestingly enough, still above the 10 and the 30-day moving averages. At this point, expect that to fall back through in terms of the bond futures, the 10-year bond futures that we've actually got here, as well as those ones that are expiring in June. And likewise, in relation to the 20-year bond futures, you'll probably come down close towards these, these um, 10 and 30-day moving averages for these ones there, and likewise for the June contracts. We now move across to the scans that are performed on a weekly basis for the ASX Traders United Facebook page. Like I always say, if you're not a member of the Facebook page, feel free to come along and join us. The links are down below. Feel free to have a look in the description and the comments section down below to find out further details. The first section involves those that are new to the scans, those that haven't fully activated one way or another in terms of the bearish or the bullish potential. Once they do that, we then move them to the next section in terms of further bearish or further bullish potential, and then we keep on tracking them from that point onwards as well. So let's go to the first section in terms of those that are fairly new to the scans, and we're just tracking them through to see how they go. The first of which is Byron Energy Limited, ticker code BYE. Now, in terms of activity at the end of last week, this had actually activated in terms of the potential bullish key reversal bottom, which was actually detected way back here on the 14th of May. So go back to the um, video right at the beginning of that, that particular point in time. It activated here on the 31st of May and, and essentially this week on the Thursday, a fantastic day, went up 18%. So for anyone who's actually involved in that potential in that particular trade, congratulations. It's actually been performing very, very well towards the end of this week. Um, so it actually has done extremely well there. Um, so we'll keep on following this through. We'll move this across to the further bullish potential list now, and we'll keep on tracking that through. It's closed above both the 10 and the 30-day moving averages at this point in time. Now, I've actually, um, during the week, I'd actually notified everyone on the... Um, on the ASX Traders United Facebook page in terms of this as well too. So people were, were aware of that move overall. So congratulations there. Big thing about this though, like I have mentioned as well, later on this month, there is going to be a shareholders meeting about their voluntary delisting from the ASX. So be very, very mindful of that. The, the delisting from the ASX is scheduled from my understanding for next month. So just be, wary, just be wary and mindful of the dates. Be wary and mindful of the movements about what's going on with that as well too. There is that support level, which is which would be a resistance level of, of interest. I'm highlighting right there in terms of 5.8 cents that it'll actually be going up against. It's tackling that right now as we speak. Um, so you might you just want to use this as a quick, quick entry and exit kind of situation in terms of what you've been in at there. Very, very nice move if you've done that in itself and you want to get out at that point, by all means, entirely up to you in terms of how you wish to treat this. Um, so overall, whatever way you would wish to have a look at this, by all means, go for it. But at the same time, you know, you can raise your stops to above break even and make sure you've got yourself there. This is a gap overall. You could even um, potentially raise the stop to just underneath the 5.3 level. And if it basically breaks down beneath that, then you've at least let it run and move on in whatever way you like. So plenty of opportunities there overall. Obviously, I can't provide financial advice. You have to look at it in your own situation there. See the disclaimer at the beginning of the presentation. But either way, congratulations. It is moving along very nicely indeed in relation to that trade there. So it's Byron Energy, ticket code BYE. Next company on the list is DevX Resources Limited, ticket code DEV. Not a great week for this one overall, unfortunately. It activated back here on the 15th and 16th of May, performed really, really well in terms of that particular week there, the 27th of May, as you can see. 
And essentially, at the end of last week, we were basically talking about it right at that point over, overall here. Really bad day for it, unfortunately, on Tuesday. So anyone who potentially may have actually raised their stop losses um, to underneath here would probably be out of that at this point in time. Just a matter of having to see how the market reacted around it at that point there at 39.5 cents, for instance. Um, but yeah, obviously not going all that great the way that that's actually reacted at that particular stage. It's come back and tested pretty much the area of entry really at this point in time in terms of the support level here um but it's actually bounced off that support level so it's still performing reasonably well um it's just a matter of having a look at your own reward to risk ratio um and, and having a look to see what you wish to do with this particular trade overall there but it's still hanging in there the mere fact that we actually still have a rising 10 and 30 day moving averages at this point in time and it's right in there in the no man's land territory is basically suggesting that this is actually still going along okay, even though the momentum is actually waning. So have a look and see how you wish to work with this in terms of your own trade and go from there. That's DevX Resources, ticker code DEV. Moving along to the next the next um, company, Gallon Limited, Gallon Lithium Limited, bit of a mouthful, but ticker code GLN, G for Golf, L for Lima, in for Nelly. Now with this one here, at the end of last week, it hadn't activated, and that was at the end of 31st of May. The end of this particular week, you can see right at the top of the screen, the low of 20 and a half cents. Now the day of interest for this particular bullish key reversal bottom, the low of that was 21 cents. Now, Friday's trade being the low of 20 and a half cents, is actually traded beneath the low of that bullish key reversal bottom. So that is essentially saying now, no go, no deal. We're out of this particular one in terms of even looking at this overall. The trade had not activated. So basically in accordance with our rules, no one should even be in this one out of all honesty. So really, we are no longer looking at this. We're just going to remove this from the watch list and say, thank you for providing the opportunity to even be looking at this, but essentially, no go. Okay, it didn't activate. We're basically saying forget about this one, move along. So we'll take this off the watch list and say sayonara. So goodbye to GLN. We'll keep an eye in terms of any other signals that may come through. But right now, this is not a go. So GLN, goodbye. Next ticker, next company, Jupiter Mines Limited, ticker code JMS. J for, J for Jill, M for Mary, S for Sam. Um, so with this one here, at the end of last week, we were basically hanging around up here. It was above the 10 and the 30 day moving averages at that point in time. We've now slipped beneath those, okay? So essentially we're right over here, slipped beneath that. So there is essentially now a caution on this particular stock if you are holding this one here. With it beneath both the 10 and the 30 day moving averages, we are now testing this area here in terms of this particular support level at 31 cents. So trading at 32 cents, it's above that at this point in time. There is that support level there. There's a support level of 28 and a half cents and a support level of 27 cents. So have a look at your reward to risk ratio in relation to this particular trade and see how you are faring overall with that if you are in this trade. That is Jupiter Mines Limited, ticket code JMS. Next company on the list, Kingston Resources Limited, ticket code K. S N K for Kilo, S for Sam, N for Nelly. Now, this one here, a bullish potential was detected on the 31st of May, essentially having a look to see how the market reacted to the resistance from September 2023 at 8.7. It hasn't reacted all that well so far on the 5th of June. It's still hanging around just beneath that area overall there. And, well, momentum is just doing nothing at this point in time. So no activation as yet. We'll sit on our hands and we'll basically see how things move with that. It may not move at all. Let's see. So that's Kingston Resources, ticker code KSN. Next company on the list, Cube Holdings Limited, ticker code QUB. Q for Quebec, U for Umbrella, B for Bravo. Now, this train had actually activated back over here on um, a Darvis box setup um, on the 27th of May. It fell a little bit on its face, but it didn't go beneath the stop loss around this area here. 
often another entry, I suppose, for people who are actually interested in getting into this during this particular week. Um, and centrally, it's just basically about break even at this point in time. Stay okay. We'll just wait and see. Um, but overall, it's above the 10 and 30 day moving averages. So now, anyone who's in this trade, we'll just see how it goes. But that's Cube Holdings Limited. Dear code Q U B. Next company on the list, Coronado Global Resources, ticker code CRN. Now, in relation to this particular company here, this was a short. The trade had actually activated on the 30th of May. And in relation to this one here, even uh, at the end of last week, which was basically here, what I'll do with this is I'll actually just raise this chart so you can see it a bit clearer. There we go. Okay. So at the end of last week, we were basically here. The word of caution in relation to this was, as you can see, the RSI at that point in time was rising. And it was a matter of just keep an eye on this as to whether or not the RSI was going to rise even more suddenly. Sure enough, on the Monday, yep, it did. And this was a stop out on the Monday overall there as it got above the top of the Davis box there. So look, the risk, the risk was already calculated into, into the actual um, trade itself at that particular point in time. So overall there, not a problem whatsoever. Stock was activated, sudden rise in the RSI, also a crossover in DMI, as you can see on the chart there as well too. And that was basically it, so trade over. And look what happened throughout the rest of the week. So that's basically it. So the charts will protect you in that way. They will let you know when something does not go right and it will give you the idea as to, okay, trade is over and that is essentially it. So that's it. So Coronado, Global Resources, the short was over in relation to that and it just lets you know. So that was basically the end of that trade. So the end of that one, CRN. Moving on to the next one. We'll remove that one from the list. Uh, GPT Group, ticker code GPT. Uh, G for golf, P for Peter, T for Tom. With this one here, we had a bearish, pot bearish potential detected on the 31st of May. And this one hasn't activated yet because it hasn't actually gone beneath that level there. Pretty much as simple as that. Interestingly enough, we are actually testing the resistance level up here at $4.32. Tested it up here, come back beneath it on the Friday. So still in play in relation to that, even though it has closed above the 10 and the 30 day moving average. So let's have a look at this and see how it goes. Obviously no trade activated at this point, so not really in this one at all. It's just a matter of just seeing whether or not this actually activates and the indicators turn around and do something here. But at this point, it's not really looking like it's going to actually do anything. So we'll just watch this one and See how it is. We'll just track it again for another week. You can always just get rid of it after that. But that's a GPT group. Homeco, uh, Homeco Daily Daily Needs Real Estate uh, Investment Trust. Another one that hasn't activated as well this week. So you know, we're getting the general trend that we are actually moving upwards, as you also saw earlier in the presentation as well in terms of the property um, sector, in terms of um, real estate actually moving upwards. These ones have gone upwards as well too, so it didn't activate the shorts. So overall, bearish potential detected on the 31st of May. It's only gone upwards as well. This one actually has closed above the former resistance area though here. Um, so overall, it's actually showing some strength. However, look at the momentum indicators. Not really doing anything, are they? So will this actually just hang about above the resistance or is it going to come back down beneath it? Let's keep an eye on this one and watch. Maybe there is some weakness, residual weakness still hanging around in this as well too. Anything is possible. But it you know, doesn't hurt just to at least keep an eye on it and see. Should it come back down and actually start testing these levels again, we may still have this short in play as well too. If not, we haven't lost anything. No trade being activated, so it doesn't really matter. To your code, HDN. H for Harry, D for Delta, N for Nelly. Seek Limited, ticker code SEK, S for Sierra, E for Echo, K for Kilo. And this trade actually activated back here on the 22nd of May. It did actually perform reasonably well for a while here, but even at the end of last week, like I was mentioning there with that too, RSI was threatening to go upwards very, very fast. Sure enough, look what's also happened with this one too. Very, very sudden rise in the RSI has basically actually pushed it upwards 
We actually had the bearish outside week pretty much been tested and exceeded. And that's exactly what happened there as well too. So the outside week stop got activated on that particular day. RSI spike as well. And that's pretty much been made there. I do apologize. The voice is really in me trouble today. Um, so the outside week stop has basically been activated there. And um, that's basically stopped the, uh, the situation there too. So that trade has also gone out the window on that one as well. And essentially, yep, that's pretty much about it there. So it's a lot of chop is going on with some of these trades as well too. And that's essentially just the way the market goes and it's the nature of trading at times. But that's essentially it in terms of that particular trade there to seek as well. So ticker code SEK, we'll remove that from the watch list as well. Moving on to the further bullish potential stocks now. And the first one we're looking at here is Black Cat Syndicate Limited. T code BC8, B for Bravo, C for Charlie, and the number eight. Now, in relation to this particular stock, like we mentioned last week, it was in a trading halt at the end of last week. And with that trading halt, it was basically in relation to a capital raising that they had actually mentioned in relation to that trading halt. Sure enough, the trading halt came off. And with that uh, capital raising, it actually bounced right off the volume profile region that was highlighted in on the chart previously. And you can see exactly what's happened ever since then. It's actually bounced right off that and pretty much right back into no man's land territory. So still quite a viable trade. Anyone who's actually in that trade, well, congratulations overall. You're actually doing quite well because you're pretty much back to where you would have actually entered. Plus, you've actually got the option now as well, too, to purchase additional stock if you really want to. So overall, you've done quite well. And uh, it's actually not looking too bad in relation to the way things are actually going with this particular stock. So you've got that option there in terms of the way that that's actually happened. Or on top of that as well, you may have even just gotten out even earlier up there. So there's plenty of different ways of being able to look at this particular trade in terms of um, how you've actually dealt with this trade in general. So well done. Um, hope everything's going okay for you in terms of that trade. And basically just see how things are working out for you there. Do note though, as well with this, this area here in terms of 32 cents could act as a resistance level. So just be mindful of that and, whether, and just have a look and see how the market reacts to that level just in terms of a suggestion based on what the charts are essentially saying here for Black Cat. So that's Black Cat Syndicate, ticket code BC8. Next company on the list, Prospect Resources Limited, ticket code PSC. P for Peter, S for Sierra, C for Charlie. Unfortunately, not a great week for this particular company. They had a great day of trade there on the 24th of May. May have been a time to get in, get out pretty quickly by the looks of it, unfortunately, with this one, um, because this particular week has not been good. It's now closed beneath both the 10 and the 30 day moving averages, so a bit of caution in relation to this. It was an outside week in terms of the entry of this, so there's the actual exit point is beneath this support level, essentially. So still a viable trade in relation to the way this is all going. It's just a matter now of having a look at your reward risk ratio and seeing how you are positioned yourself personally in terms of the way this is all going. So that's Prospect Resources Limited, ticket code PSC. Next company on the list, Spartan Resources Limited, ticket code SPR, S for Sierra, P for Peter, R for Roger. Tracking along quite nicely. It's just really sitting there on the 10 day moving average at this point in time. Meandering along, doing okay, and just sitting there. Just note that the momentum is just draining away a little bit there. Um, could just be really testing this uh, previous resistance now support area here at 73 and a half cents. So have a look once again. What is your reward risk ratio in terms of working on this and seeing where you sit? Ticket code SPR. 
Next one on list, Silver Lake Resource Limited Ticket Code SLR, S for Sierra, L for Lima, R for Roger. Now this one here, we're going to remove from the watch list for the main reason this has been taken over by Red. Okay, so Red Limited is now taken over this. These, these shares now are delisted as of yesterday, until the 7th of June. So trading has now ceased in relation to this company here. If you still own shares in this particular company, then they'll just now be converted across to red. So they'll just be taken over by them anyway. So you still have the option to be able to actually trade them and sell them off or hold them or do whatever you like with them. Essentially, the movement of the, of the shares of this particular company have been replicating the, the uh, movement of red anyway over the last week or two. So that's okay. So you can do whatever you wish with these anyway overall. But essentially, this is done extremely well for quite some time. Um, and uh, look, overall, even if you just only entered in this particular trade overall here, you've done okay. But if you've entered in another trade, which we actually had even earlier along the, along the lines a long, long time ago, you've done really, really well. So overall, this is doing really okay. So congratulations in terms of any performance you've actually had with this. Um, and basically, wish you all the best in terms of whether or not you actually wish to keep this as Red 5 um, or you know if you've just taken the profits and run. So congratulations in terms of everything that's happened in terms of Silver Lake Resources. Next company on the list here is Satya Limited. Now, this is actually a short, which is actually activated back over here on the 20th of May. Performing okay so far. Um, however, just keep an eye on the level of interest around here. And it's highlighted on the right-hand side in terms of $2.31 and $2.34. $2.31 in particular is the open of that green candle. The $2.34 is the 10-day moving average by the blue line that's coming through. The reason why I say those level of interest there is they're literally forming a support level underneath the closing share price at this point in time. Now, why that's important is have a look at what the relative strength is doing. Relative strength is starting to rise, as you can see. Okay, So it's starting to rise, and we've got also the momentum potentially starting to decline on the bearish side. So as that's starting to decline there and the momentum of the RSI is starting to rise, it could be giving us some indication that we may actually be having some upward movement in the share price happening. We actually had a reasonable uprise in the share price on Friday. went up about 4.4%. So we could be having some increase in the prices coming through. Should we start getting a bit of a breakout happening here, your short could be threatened. Is it a much of a problem? Not really, considering the fact that you actually got in, in terms of the short, at around about $2.59, okay? It's currently sitting about $2.36, so you've got a pretty good wheel room here, okay? So you've got plenty of time to decide exactly what the story is here. Not so much of an issue, but just to be aware of it. So keep an eye as to what is going on here, especially if this red line here crosses over the orange line. The reason why I say that is, it's a negative DMI. The negative DMI crosses over that ADX, the ADX being the orange line, that would give us a sign, it's a signal overall in terms of the bearish indications weakening. So that's one thing there, especially if the RSI is still increasing as well too. So they're confirmatory signals. So keep an eye on those kind of things there. So that's Satya Limited, ticket code CTT. C for Charlie, T for Tom, T for Tom. Next ticker code is Endeavor Group Limited, ticker code EDV. Now with this one here, we were talking about this one last week as well in terms of keeping an eye on the RSI for a sudden rise. It sure did, okay? And it also went above this particular area in terms of prior support, which then turned into resistance and then it broke through that resistance. And it sure broke through that resistance there on Wednesday, okay? And look what happened ever since. Up it went. Now, similar situation as it's here. Right? Have a look in terms of the, the bottom indicators down below. RSI was rising suddenly. And also, you've got a weakening negative DMI. It's not breaking through the ADX. But interestingly, look what happened over here in terms of the positive DMI breaking through the ADX. Another signal in terms of bullishness. 
So overall, the ADX is a very, very, well, DMI indicator is really, really important indicator we should be really paying attention to quite a lot more often because it can give us a really, really good signal as to what can actually occur, even in that preemptive stage as well, what could actually occur too. So really, really cool. So the stop was activated here on the Wednesday. Good for us to cover the short and take our profits as well, okay? Because really, the trade had activated back up here which was just beneath the low there for about, about five dollars and seven. And for a student keeping an eye on it here, you know, basically about five dollars. So we got some of the cent, we got a few cents out of that there without a problem, even if you hadn't gotten out down below there. So overall, nice work, oh, nice work with that there, Endeavor Group, when it turned against you. And it gave us lots of warning signals down below over here in terms of the fact that the trend was changing around. So congratulations in terms of Endeavor Group if you were still in that and then managed to get out when it turned against you even up here as well too, if you hadn't got out down below there. So congratulations there. That's Endeavor Group EDV. We'll move that from the watch list there. But keep an eye out with Satya if you're in that one as well. We now move on to the new scans for the week, things to keep an eye on with. And also, if you're still not a member of the, of the um, ASX Traders United Facebook page, what are you waiting for? Come across, get involved with taking a look at the entire suite of scan results. These are only a selection. Have a look at the entire suite and also get involved in a competition that we actually have running as well on a monthly basis. They also roll over, so you can also get more and more experience. So if you're not getting involved in terms of actual trading, you can actually just even just practice and then get more familiar with things in real live prices. So nothing to lose. The first trade that's come up this particular week is Technology One Limited, ticker code TNE. Now, a little bit of caution with this one. Remember how I was actually talking about the sectors earlier. The infotech sector is probably one of the weaker sectors at this point still needs to make higher highs or at least have the indicators swinging around. Okay, so keep an eye on that. This could be the catalyst for things to swing around. But one thing to really keep an eye on with this here is the volume. Okay, the volume itself, this actually did activate. I only just detected this in the scans today. This actually did activate on Friday. Reason why it activated? The top of the Davis box was breached. Okay, I'm gonna go through that in a little bit in a good moment for those who are new to the series and wondering what's a Davis box. Okay, I'll go through in a moment. But the volume is low. So just be aware of that. Okay, so what's a Davis box? Okay, now this green box is the Davis box. How is it constructed? Well, firstly, this bar here on the 22nd of May, you can see the date down below. This bar here on the 22nd of May, well, this actually is the 200-day high. Step number one, 200-day high. On top of that as well, we've actually had a volume spike in recent times. Actually, it was actually formed on the same day. It doesn't have to be the same day as the 200-day high. In this particular example, it was. So 200-day high, 200-day high number one. We also have a recent volume spike. That's character, characteristic number two of the Davis box. The next characteristic after that is it forms a recent low shortly after that 200-day high. So it formed a low there, but it wasn't, it wasn't the ultimate low afterwards. This one was, okay? So the low here was $17.22, as you can see at the top of the screen. $17.22. That is the third characteristic of the Davis box. That forms the bottom of the Davis box. The high of the Davis box is the high of the 200-day high. $18.22, as you can see at the top of the screen. So we've got the characteristics of the Davis box already formulated. So we have high, 18.22. We have the low, 17.22. Importantly, after the third characteristic has been formed in terms of the low, we have to also have three days after the low of that Davis box, where three days after, which does not breach the low of that Davis box. Okay, that's step number four. So we've got that. Great. 
So we now have our Darvis box set up. So we've got our box, it's already there, fantastic. And we can calculate the risk level on that as well, 5.6%. Now the reason for the risk, essentially what we need to do is, the, the risk, risk on this is essentially the, the stop loss is inherent in the Darvis box. If we get into the trade, the stop loss is placed one pip below the bottom of the Darvis box. That's essentially it. Now, the entry is going to be one of two potential options. The first is the breach above the top of the Darvis box. So otherwise, one pip above. $18.23. That's one entry, number one. Secondly, if we have the indicators turning around on the way up. So in this case, we could have, for instance, the DMI or the ADX moving upwards as well as the RSI with good volume. So technically, this could have been an entry point on that particular day there. Right? The volume actually did increase on this day here. You can see that. The volume went up 925,000. Okay. The volume went up and the ADX went up and the RSI went up. So that technically is an entry day there. You could use that as an entry day right there. And it also breached above the resistance points. So that was actually technically an entry point right there. Had we been aware of it, okay? That's the thing. So you've got to actually be aware of these as well as they're forming or in terms of your detection. Now, I was only aware of this from the from the scans at the end of the week. So wasn't wasn't aware of it prior to that. Now, it's also, it's also actually activated again on Friday in terms of breaching the top of the Davis box, but the volume was low. So this actually gives a bit of caution. If there was no interest as it breached the top of the Davis box, hmm, is it too risky for, uh, for people to actually get into at this point in level, right? So maybe what might be worthwhile is watching and seeing if there's a bit of a pullback to this level again, and seeing whether or not there's a level of interest at that point. It could be at that stage. Then that might be a more appropriate entry point. But keep an eye on this one. That could be really, really interesting. But that's Technology One Limited, TNE. T for Tom, N for Nelly, E for Echo. Next company on the list is Drone Shield Limited, ticker code DRO. D for Dog, R for Roger, O for Oscar. Now, this one, we've actually had a bit of discussion in relation to this particular stock in the ASX Traders United Facebook page over the last few weeks. Very, very good performing stock, as you can see. Now, I've had a lot of lines drawn up on this one here. These are all the volume profile levels, uh, as we were having a discussion about this, when it was trading around about 90 cents. Okay, I was in two minds about this as to whether or not it was going to break out. Sure enough, it did. It broke out very, very well, and a few members of our um, of our group and actually taking advantage of this and it's done extremely well. Well done, okay? Congratulations to those who are involved. Now, sorry to burst the bubble if this is gonna actually happen. However, there's a potential bearish key reversal top that I detected on this one here during the scans this week that's actually formed on Thursday. Whether this comes to fruition or not, I'll be very, very interested to see, but it looks as though the real key level is a dollar twenty nine and a half. Now that dollar twenty nine and a half, in terms of the volume volume profile area, comes to fruition and holds in terms of a potential resistance area. Then this could prove to be quite nasty for this stock, because the only other area in terms of volume profile that could be based as a support area, maybe as low as or as high as I suppose a dollar eight and a half. So it could come back and do a little bit of a retracement down to that level there in the first instance. And if that doesn't hold, then it may come all the way back down to potentially around about the 96 level. So this could be quite interesting overall. Let's see how this unfolds. So I'm hoping for those, especially the members who actually have done very, very well, I'm hoping it doesn't come to fruition in that way because I'd like to see them do very, very well. But charts are coming in and doing anything in that way and they're giving us an indication of this nature I could potentially see that at least in the first instance that this level here may not hold and then it could come back down to a dollar eight and a half. 
Let's see how it goes. But that's Drone Shield Limited Ticket Code DRO. Be mindful, be careful, be alert, not alarmed, but just be alert as to the situation could potentially unfold here. Um, in terms of anything there as well, you would need to get past that high up here um, to get away from this potential um, key reversal bottom, or key reversal top, I should say. They're rare when they occur, but when they do occur, they can be quite powerful. We saw that with Vol previously, and it dropped before going into new highs. And last but not least, in terms of the, in terms of the uh, scans for this particular week, but obviously there's many more scans to actually take a look at at the ASX Trades United Facebook page, but for the presentation today is Warley Limited, ticker code WOR. Now, this was actually detected last week. I didn't present it last week, though, but it was detected last week and actually activated this week. So it was an outside week which was detected and it activated. So in terms of the outside week, essentially what basically happened in terms of this is we actually have the range of this week. So for those who are new to the series and are not so sure what an outside week means, I'll go through it with you. Essentially, the outside week is the Friday here all the way through to the Monday, but the high was actually on the Tuesday. So take a look at the top of the screen. The high was 15.27. The low of that week was 14.61. That's your range. Okay, now the range of that particular week fully encompasses the week, week's range of the, pre, of the prior week. That's an outside week. Now, from swing traders' perspective, they love seeing this. Okay, now essentially what that will basically do is it will form a high swing top up here, and then essentially when it gets activated, that will then be a resistance level, and it has activated this week. So by forming by actually trading beneath that level there, it forms that resistance level up above. Now that resistance level, as you can see, is actually above both the, both the declining 10 and 30 day moving averages. And that's essentially it. So by actually trading there, down beneath that level now, you've got a resistance level here. And on top of that as well, as it, as it forms new lows, you can even lower your stop loss, even lower as it keeps on going down. That's the whole idea in relation to these kind of trades. So you can capture more and more profits as the price goes down further. That's the whole idea behind that for Wally Limited. Ticket code W-O-R. W for whiskey, O for Oscar, R for Roger. And that brings us to the end of the presentation for this week. So I hope you found something useful and helpful out of all of that. And I look forward to catching up with you again next week. Come across the ASX Trades United Facebook page, like I always say. In the meantime, we've also got the cryptocurrency review as well, which you will um, be publishing in a few moments as well too. And there's also the long-term moving averages you can check out as well too. Links coming up in a few moments. All right, I'll catch up with you again next week. Enjoy your fantastic long weekend as well in the meantime. All right, catch you soon. Bye for now.